Hey everyone, Kyle Bascom here. Uh, today we're going to be changing the rear brakes on our 2015 C300 4Matic model. When we purchased the vehicle, we noticed that there were aftermarket brakes on the vehicle. It had been sitting for a while, so there was a lot of buildup of corrosion. And for that reason, we're going to be replacing the brakes. In your case, your vehicle may not have had the brake serviced in the last 40,000 miles, or maybe it's noisy, or maybe you have an indicator on the dash that your brakes are worn and need to be replaced. So, if you're replacing the brakes, the procedure that we're going through today is going to be applicable to just about every W205 C-Class model. So that's every sedan from 2015 to the present. And if you have a coupe or convertible model that they started offering in uh, 2017, this is going to be applicable as well. Now that you know what we'll be doing today, let's take a look at the tools that you're going to need to perform this job. I've got a 3 8 drive flexible head ratchet here. Standard ratchet will do just fine. An 18 mil socket to remove the bolts that attach the caliper bracket to the wheel carrier. We've got a T30. You'll use that to remove your brake rotor. Uh, 7 millimeter Allen. Uh, that will help you remove your sliding pins. It's always helpful to have a pad spreader You'll need a torque wrench so that you torque things correctly. And nice to have, but not entirely necessary, is this 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench. The last thing I have is a soft bristle brush. I use that to clean the sliding pins. And almost forgot to mention, these hooks are super handy for hanging up the caliper so that you don't bind your brake hose. Now that you know what tools are needed to complete the job, let's get started. All right, so in order to perform a rear brake service, you have to set the rear brakes in what Mercedes likes to call the fitting position. The only reason why you need to do that is because there is an electronic uh, parking brake act actuator in the rear. We need to get that out of the way. If we try to retract the piston while the motor is still in the active position, you're going to break something. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure the doors are closed, um, make sure your parking brake is not actuated, Go to key position one, where you see the uh, trip computer and the odometer. Hold down the phone answer and OK buttons for about three to four seconds. And then that's going to bring us to the menu for assist plus, dyno mode, things like that. We're going to select brake pad replace using the buttons on the steering wheel and then hit OK. We're going to hit OK one more time to move it to the fitting position. What you just heard was the motor retracting. And now that we're in the fitting position, we're gonna go ahead and service the rear brakes. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna work on getting the caliper separated from the caliper bracket. Uh, this is your anti-rattle tension spring. I'm just putting pressure on it by squeezing it and then pulling it out towards me. That's all you need to do to remove it. If everything's very, in this case, everything's not too tight, if it's not, what I will normally do just to loosen things up slightly is pull the caliper towards me a little bit. Uh, that'll work to retract the piston ever so slightly. Or sometimes I might come in here and just put a little bit of pressure um, to move the caliper forward. Things are loose enough. I'm just gonna start working on loosening uh, the sliding pins and removing them. Okay, we've got uh, some dust covers for our sliding pins. So I'm just Prying them off. You can see that's a seven mil, uh, seven millimeter Allen that we're going to use to remove that. Just going to come in here with our ratchet, start loosening things up. These are not torqued down with a lot of force, so they should slide out very easily. You can see I can turn it by hand, no issues there. Uh, this is what the sliding pin looks like. And we're going to do the same for the top. A lot of road salt and dust because this is a New England vehicle. Just grabbing a six inch extension so I can kind of twist this by hand. I've got a little more space to work with. All right, that feels like it's practically all the way out. I'm just getting it out of the bore of the uh, dust boot. There we are. This is what the other one looks like. It's identical to the top. All right, now what I'm going to attempt to do is remove this uh, caliper and what you'll notice is the pads are staying behind in the bracket. So I'm going to take a moment to unplug the wear sensor. Whew, that one's really in there. There we go. I 
wasn't careful enough and that pad just hit the ground. What you'll notice is the wire for the weir sensor is tucked in here. Just sliding that out to manipulate the caliper a little bit better. And I'm just placing it on the dust shield for now, but that's definitely not where we're going to leave it. I'm grabbing my hanger and I'm going to try to find an appropriate place to hang this caliper while we work so that I'm not binding the brake hose. Okay, that'll be fine. Um, what I was looking to do is hang the caliper so it's not in the way of me removing the caliper bracket bolts, but then also I don't want to put uh, the hose at any sharp angle uh, because that could damage the brake hose. Sometimes not so much the exterior of the hose, uh, but it could damage the interior and that's the sort of thing that you're not going to see until the hose bubbles out and fails on you. We've got two 18 millimeter uh, bolts here that we're going to remove next. That will allow us to remove the brake caliper bracket. And then we can remove the rotor. All right, this is an 18 millimeter um, ratcheting wrench that I'm using here. Ah! I don't have much clearance for the wrench, so once things are loose, I'm just going to take it out by hand. <clears throat> Same deal with this one. Okay, so the only thing retaining the rotor at this point is this T30 fastener. Uh, I'm gonna send a lug in here just so that when I remove it, the rotor doesn't go flying. Um, I've got a T30 on a quarter inch. Uh, what you can do to make life easier is break this free while there's still tension from the pads and everything else on the rotor. Might be a little bit easier. Um, if it gives you any difficulty, you can also you know, slide a screwdriver in here to counter hold. Uh, I'm just going to use force. Okay, Northeast car, a lot of road salt, a lot of grime, rotors kind of staying on the hub, didn't even move when I removed the, um, the T30. So there we go. Little force, it came out. Um, if a little force doesn't do the trick, grab a dead blow, a couple of taps, that should help walk it off. So uh, looking at the hub surface, not a lot of corrosion. Actually, I'll grab the rotor and I'll show you what we've noticed. Not a lot of corrosion, um, but on the rotor, a lot of corrosion. So this is a very um, cheaply made aftermarket rotor. And that's why it looks so terrible, but it's not very worn. So I suspect what's the case is the dealer before selling the car probably threw some brakes at it, uh, the cheapest aftermarket brakes that they could find. Um, and that's why it looks so terrible and it's making a lot of noise. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it with the, um, the genuine rotors and the TRW brake pads. All right, so I am, uh, normally you'd need to clean up the hub surface before you throw the rotor on. In this case, hub's perfect. Uh, so I'm gonna throw this right back on. Lining things up. Got my T30, just gonna send it in. Next thing we're going to do is put the caliper bracket back on the car. So just lining it up as best as I can. And then just kind of feeling for when the fastener drops in and that'll let me know it's in place. And then same for the bottom one. Once I feel it drop in place, get that nice and snug. I got to look up the torque spec. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right, uh, so I'm going to snug things up a little bit more here. Oh, that's already snug enough. Um, torque spec on this one is 60 Newton meters plus an additional 45 degrees. So I've got the torque wrench set at 60 Newton meters. 
Not a lot of space to work, but we'll make it work. You can move your left hand. There we are. That's our 60. Then on the top one, again, that's our 60. And then to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to use our ratcheting wrench for our 45 degrees. Wow. That was not fun. Okay. <laughs> to, the, to the 45 degrees in my head there. There we are. Wow. Not fun. Okay, so before I prepare to get this uh, caliber back on the vehicle, I'm just gonna take a brush and um, just cleaning up my sliding pins a little bit. A little bit of accumulated um, material from the rubber boots. So we just wanna make sure that's clean so it slides back and forth freely. Just doing the same thing on the other one. There we are. All right, that's nice and clean. Next thing I'm going to do, uh, this caliper, because the pads were as, and I'll try to show you, because the pads were as new as they were, um, this piston is pretty much retracted into the caliper the, all the way. Um, but to sh just to show you how you would go about it, this is our pad spreader. This is really a pad spreader for a multi-piston caliper, but we're going to use it on this floating caliper. And what you'll notice is I'm just squeezing, um, and the piston is retracting back into the bore of the caliper. So things you do not want to do, uh, you'll notice these two nubs here that you're probably accustomed to seeing um, on brake assemblies where you had to retract the piston by spinning the caliper, you don't want to be spinning it uh, with this assembly. Okay, next thing I'm doing is I'm just preparing my, um, my pad for my wear sensor. So, little locating hole right there. Um, and then the contact is going to slide into the groove. So, I've got, it's not easy to see, but I've got everything lined up. And I'm just pushing it in until it hits the base right there. Now I know it's all set. My outboard pad, uh, what you'll notice is it doesn't have this tension spring um, and it doesn't have the sensor. The inboard pad has the sensor. I'm going to lift the caliper up to set that up. Sliding the, just being very careful not to let everything fall. Sliding the caliper in place. I am guiding my wear indicator plug so that doesn't get bound up. There we are. And then let's get our hanger out of here. All right, right now I'm inserting my slide pins in. Not tightening them down, I'm just inserting them for now. So I've got everything lined up and I'm just feeling for when the sliding pin goes into the bore. Feels like it just did at the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same thing up top. Uh, what I noticed when I was doing it before, um, when I used the six inch extension, it gave me a little bit more room to work. So I am going to do that again here. Instead of trying to work against this bracket for uh, my electrical connectors. So I'll slide that in, putting light pressure on the caliper. Here we are. Ooh. This. What you just heard is the tool um, slipped out of the head of the sliding pin. So make sure that your tool is all the way in. There we are. Then just go a couple of turns. Feels like it's in place. Caliper is not rotating out. Now I'm going to go ahead and snug these pins down. For my top pin, I just grabbed a three inch extension so I could use the ratchet and have more room to work. Coming back in, snugging the bottom one down. 
Then we're gonna put our dust caps back in. There we are. Now, what you noticed is um, when I was manipulating the caliper and moving things around, I did remove this uh, wire lead from the grommet that was, it was in. So let's slide that back in. That way it doesn't end up accidentally rubbing on anything that's rotating at high speeds and abrading itself. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is plug the weir sensor back in. So what I'm looking for is uh, there's a tab inside of this guy that shows me the correct orientation. And then as long as the tab is lined up, I slide it in place until that blue stopper uh, mates up with the other side of the electrical connector. So that's in, that's in place, that's not going anywhere. The last thing I'm gonna do at the front of the caliper is uh, put that tension spring back on. Okay, so I'm just inserting it here. Sliding it in. Doesn't require a lot of force. So that's in, we've got the brake rotor on. Um, you have two visual wear indicators here. So when these guys go away, you know that the disc is spent and it needs to be replaced. It means it's at its minimum thickness. Uh, as long as these guys are still visible, uh, to be quite honest with you, if the pads are worn, just throw pads at it. Uh, normally your second pad change, you're gonna need to uh, replace the disc. All right, everyone. So we just finished up the brake job, uh, rear brakes on our 2015 C300. And as you can see, not really that difficult. Doesn't require that much in the way of special tools. And I'd say if it's your first time doing the job, budget about a half an hour per side. With that being said, when you do the driver side, the procedure is identical to the passenger side, except it does not include a wear sensor. If you have any questions at all, be sure to leave them in the comments below, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.